so much. This is the first time I've ever been translated, so this is a real treat. I just want to say, <laughs> That was impressive. Now try this. Hola, que coisa mais linda, mais cheia de graça, ele menina que reve, que verem que passa num dança balance. That's the first uh, verse of uh, Girl from Ipanema. That's all I know <laughs> in Portuguese. So uh, very quickly, those of you who don't know my background, I am a foreman, which is a former Mormon. That's my term. I coined that in 1996. And if you want to use it, feel free. In fact, we, we have to use that instead of ex-Mormon, because Foreman is so much better. But uh, as an introduction, I want to play something that I did last year. Um, if you noticed during the 2012 campaign, there was this ubiquity of ads, particularly on the web, by Mormons. Uh, it was a series called, And I'm a Mormon. And they basically showed people who were Mormons, and they showed that they, oh, they were just people like us, and they have kids, and they're doctors, and they're you know, house, uh, you know, homemakers and all that kind of stuff. And they told you absolutely nothing about the religion whatsoever. So I thought I would make my own version of that commercial. <laughs> and I'm a foreman, but I wanted to make it a little informative. So I'm just going to roll that right here. I'm Brian Dalton. I'm the writer, director, and creator of The Mr. Deity Show. Well, for the first 27 years of my life, I was a Latter-day Saint, a Mormon. Um, I left the church in 1993. <laughs> yeah, that's an understatement. My, uh, my life has changed in some pretty dramatic ways. How has it changed? Um, I guess in general, I'd just say that it's a lot less crazy. For instance, I no longer believe in the golden plates or in reformed Egyptian. I no longer believe that the Hebrews were a white and delightsome people 600 years before Christ. I no longer believe that men who claim to speak for God reveal anything but their own arrogance and self-delusion. I no longer believe in three heavens. I no longer believe in excommunicating historians whose only fault is telling the truth. I no longer believe that I am a literal spirit child of God. I no longer worry about a sip of wine or enjoying a cup of coffee. I no longer believe that when the prophet speaks, the thinking has been done. I no longer believe that we all have a mother in heaven. I no longer believe that God is such a poor communicator that he said horse, but meant deer. I no longer believe that a burning in my bosom is any indication of truth or value. I no longer believe that Jesus visited the Americas after his resurrection. I no longer believe that an institution which changes its doctrines as our culture evolves is in any way directed by a transcendent being. I no longer believe that other men understand God better than I do and speak for and or with him on a regular basis. I no longer believe that the Native Americans are Hebrews. I no longer believe that homosexuality is a sin. I no longer believe in secret handshakes, keywords, or new names. I no longer believe in a place called Adam on Diamond, nor do I believe that the Garden of Eden was in Jackson County, Missouri. I no longer believe in taking oaths of secrecy. I no longer believe that Jesus and Satan are brothers. I no longer give 10% of my gross income to a multi-billion dollar corporation. I no longer believe that a stone knife is a good substitute for what the Book of Mormon very specifically calls a steel sword. I no longer believe that black people are black because they fought less valiantly in some war in heaven. I no longer believe that polygamy was ever a divine institution or that God may have many wives. I no longer believe in prophets who taught that there were people on the moon. I no longer believe that God is merely an exalted man with a body of flesh and bone. I no longer believe that women are unqualified or ill-suited for leadership positions in any organization. I no longer believe that God once lived on a planet just as we do now. I no longer believe that there's a God who punishes people by darkening their skin. I no longer believe that an ordinary Egyptian funerary text from the common era contains the writings of Father Abraham. I no longer believe that I can become a God with my own universe and planets and people to worship me. I no longer believe in being vicariously baptized for dead people. I no longer believe that our God is merely one God in a potentially infinite series of gods. I no longer believe that dark-skinned people can become light-skinned people by living the Mormon gospel. I no longer wear religiously prescribed underwear nor do I believe that such a thing protects anyone. I no longer believe that God lives on or near a star or planet named Kolob. I no longer believe that placing one's face in a hat containing a seer stone is a reliable means of translating an ancient language. 
I no longer believe that my happiness is enhanced by my obedience to other men's ideas of how I should live my life. I'm Brian Dalton. I'm Brian Dalton. I'm a writer. I'm a director. I'm a rational human being. And I'm a foreman. And I'm a foreman. And I'm a foreman. Thank you very much. Um, I want to talk about this, this idea that I have that I don't care if God exists and neither should you. Um, but very quickly, I want, to, I want to give a little anecdote because every now and then atheists win one or at least the rational people win one. Um, you've all seen Christian Mingle. We've all heard of Christian Mingle. Um, Amy, who plays Lucy on the show, does trafficking of uh, commercials on television. And they wanted to run a commercial on one uh, network, I can't remember, I think it was CBS. And their lawyers wouldn't let them do it because they had this as their tagline, and the lawyers said, you can't back that up. <laughs> nice, huh? Now the irony is, I went on Christian Mingle and went through their whole process of en entering my information and my preferences and everything, and uh, that's, this is who they came up with for matches. <laughs> So there might be something to it. I don't know. So the Mr. Deity Show has been around for seven years. Um, I'm going to play an episode real quick. I play God. Um, uh, Amy Roran, who I used to be married to, plays L Lucy or Lucifer. Uh, my best friend, Jimbo, used to play Larry, who is Mr. Deity's long-suffering assistant. And then my other best friend uh, plays Jesse or Jesus. Mr. Deity can never remember his name. And that's basically the crux of it. We have conversations that kind of concretize these abstract concepts that religious people say they believe, but when you actually concretize them, they sound just absolutely ridiculous. So I'm going to play one of the latest ones. Uh, for those of you who don't know, about four weeks ago, Bill Maher gave a commentary at the end of his real-time show uh, about the Noah story, calling God a psychopathic mass murderer, which I thought was very accurate. Um, and Brian Fisher, who's this nut right-wing evangelical talk show host, talked, had the, made this whole commentary about how, you know, why God is letting Bill Maher live. Um, and it's to give him enough time to repent. So, so we did this just last week. Hey, what you doing? Oh, hey. Hi, Lucy. <clears throat> um, what? What am, what am I? I'm not, I wasn't doing anything. Really? You're not doing anything? No, not, not, not really. Um, can you give me your phone? Because mine's out of battery and I need to make a call. Yours too? Oh my gosh, what's wrong with these phones, right? I mean, they're always running out of battery. And... Your phone is out of battery? Mine? Um, <clears throat> I don't know. Probably, probably. Well, why did you say yours too? As if your phone was definitely out of battery. Well, because, you know, everybody's phones are always running out of battery, right? And it's so frustrating because it's right when you need it, you know? And so I was just saying, yours too? Give me your phone. I cannot give you my phone because that, dear Lucy, would be immoral. You know that. Either give me your phone or tell me what is going on. <sighs> All right, fine. If you must know, I'm planning on killing Bill Maher. You're planning on killing Bill Maher? HBO's Bill Maher, the real-time guy? Yes, and I didn't want to tell you because, quite frankly, I am sick to death of your constant disapproval and shaming. I mean, it is not right for an immoral being like myself to constantly be... Do you mean immortal? Immortal, yes, right. <laughs> you know what? I'm fine with it. Kill away. Really? He was given an award at an atheist convention several years ago by my friend's foundation, and he showed up with two 24-year-olds or a 22-year-old. I don't know, but it was disgusting. What a pig. Yeah, that's disgusting. And isn't he an anti-vaxxer nut? I don't know. Well, what did he do to get you all upset? He went on nationally televised television and told everyone that I am a psychopathic mass murderer. Really? Yeah, can you believe that guy? I mean, that's outrageous. Oh, because you killed all the firstborn in Egypt? No. Oh, because of the genocide in Canaan? No. Oh, because you had your own son tortured and crucified? N no, that's not why. Oh, Sodom and Gomorrah? 
No. Oh, ordering the death of all homosexuals? No. Oh, ordering the murder of all non-virgin girls? No. Ordering the death of Sabbath breakers? You know, maybe I just need to give this Mar character a little more time to repent because he's young, right? He could turn it around. I mean, he had a tough childhood. You gotta give him that because he, he had like one parent who was a Catholic, another who was a Jew. It's, it's... You mean because it's religiously confusing? No, because, you know, most kids barely survive one religion. Well, you know what? Maybe it's for the best then. But you know, I was really in the mood to smite someone. I haven't done that for a long time. I know, I was getting kind of bloodlusty too. Really? I, I didn't know you got that way. It's not often, but I do. Maybe once every millennium or so. Well, you know, my people are really up in arms about this Tyson guy. The chicken farmer? No, he's an astrologist phys ed teacher or something like that. Got a show about Kronos. Why would they be out to get him? Like, my people need a good reason, really? I mean, they, they put away Galileo for saying the sun goes around the Earth. Right. There's also this science guy, um, Bob... Benny, Biff, I can't remember. What did he do? He apparently chewed up some ham and spit it out at, a, at some debate or something. They don't know you don't care about pork anymore? Apparently not. No. You know what, neither of these guys sound like they really deserve it, so let's find someone that we both can agree on. Someone we can both agree on? That's, that's gonna be tough. There's gotta be somebody that everybody can agree on. Lucy, you're never gonna find someone that everyone agrees, you know, should be smote or smoten or smitten. Is that There's gotta be somebody. Okay, here, let me see. Let me put my dunce cap on. You got your dunce cap on, too? I think you can. Mm -hmm. I think you can. Oh, I have a thought. Are you thinking the same thing I'm thinking? I think so. I think we have a smoter. <laughs> Tell me that's not viciously delicious. <laughs> so I wanted to talk to you about God. Oh wait, that's not the right one. No, no, no. Mm. I think you know some of his followers. There we go. My favorite, uh, all of our favorite deities. I'm, no, I'm sorry, our second favorite deity. Someone painted this and gave this to me today. Um, uh, Simon. Simon Krager, are you here? Is it Krager? Simon Krager? Wherever. Great job. Nice. There he is. We look very similar, don't we? I like that. So I have a problem with these debates about the existence of God. Um, not that they're not entertaining, although they're a lot less so since Hitch died. Um, but they... they give up something that's very important, I think, to us in terms of understanding things, and that is they kind of seed the idea that, that such a question could be answered by an argument. Um, and that's a, it's an empirical question, and as we all know, empirical questions are answered by evidence, and arguments are not evidence. So over time, Christians have come up with these various cosmological, ontological, teleological, moral arguments. The problem is arguments are not evidence. Um, arguments can sound absolutely great and rational, make all kinds of sense, and just be completely dead wrong. In fact, that is, in essence, the, the, the whole point of science. And what we overcame was our own brains and our own muddled thinking. We came up with a methodology to say, yeah, that sounds like a good thing, but let's test it out. Um, and we turn those into hypotheses, which we test and confirm now, uh, which we really haven't done. A solar system, you know, I got to go through this really quick, sorry, for, but I don't have as much time as I thought I had. Um, the solar system is a great example. There were 100, 100 years between uh, Copernicus and Galileo to get that one really solidi solidified. And that's one of those ideas that, you know, it makes perfect sense to us now, but it's completely counterintuitive when you think about it. We're sitting here, and then this thing goes like that over us. How could we be moving, and uh, how could we be moving around it? So um, just a couple more examples of scientific ideas that are completely counterintuitive, Euclidean geometry, uh, simultaneity, and quantum mechanics. Um, the Christians like to use these arguments, and a perfect example is irreducible complexity, which is an idea that they came up with years ago to fight evolution, uh, by saying there are certain mechanisms which are so complex that they are irreducibly complex, meaning you cannot 
you cannot get beyond them. There's no way that they could have evolved because they have to be this way just to begin with. Boom, bang, bing. And of course, uh, they use the example of the eye, um, the uh, flagellum. Uh, they, they used all kinds of things which has, have since been just put asunder by various scientists who came along and said, well, that, here's what you get if you have something before the eye and before that and before that. There's a beautiful video uh, by Richard Dawkins showing how each step along the way gives some kind of evolutionary advantage to the creature who has it. Um, it's just a ridiculous idea. Uh, I want to recommend this video, if you, if you can go take a look at it, because this is, the Kalam cosmological argument is the big argument that they use. I'm going to talk about it for a minute, the Christians. It's their argument for God's existence. Um, and this video called the Kalam Cosmological Fallacy by Sisyphus Redeemed, that's the channel, is absolutely brilliant. It's too long to play here. I can't remember how long it is. It's uh, 13 minutes, almost 14 minutes. But it is the best takedown of this idea that arguments can be in and of themselves uh, indicative of some kind of greater truth. We, we have to have more. That's the whole history of science. This is one of my favorite cartoons. <laughs> you have all these great uh, formulations, and then a miracle occurs. That's the essence of religion right there. We can't explain it, so it's, uh, it's a miracle. And religion really, in the end, is, is the ultimate failure of the human imagination. We can't imagine, we couldn't imagine uh, that there was this thing called gravity that held the planets together and, and made everything move around. We couldn't have imagined that in our primitive stages. But uh, eventually, from actual knowledge, we get, a, we get a grasp on these things, and then we're able to accumulate more knowledge based on the knowledge that came before instead of just wallowing in our ignorance. I have an episode of Mr. Deity coming up, which I, I wrote one of my favorite lines ever, uh, ignorance is blessed, which uh, <laughs> I think sums that up nice. Here's Mr. Deity's formula, <laughs> scientific formula for how things get done. So the cosmolo cos Kalam cosmological argument says that whatever begins to exist has a cause. The universe began to exist, therefore the universe has a cause. This cause is the god of classical theism. It sounds, it sounds good to a lot of people, but the problem once again is that most, not most, but a lot of the truths that we have discovered throughout the last 400 years during the scientific revolution are completely counterintuitive. So the fact that something sounds good, okay, that's great, that's nice, that's beautiful, now where's your evidence? You have to go out and gather the evidence. I came up with my own argument here. All things that exist have a cause. The God of Abraham does not have a cause. Therefore, the God of Abraham does not exist. <laughs> that sounds good, right? I think we'd all go with that. Um, the problem with Kalam, though, even as I see it, is that even if it's solid, even if it were true, what does it leave us with? The, the God of the Kalam cosmological argument is just someone who started the universe going. It doesn't tell us anything about God or what, who he is or what he wants, whether it can be trusted or not. Bless you, by the way. Um, it leaves you basically with deism. And no theist likes deism because deism is just this thing where, yeah, there, there's a God out there and he started everything, but he doesn't really care about us and he's not telling us what to do because that's what they really want to do. They want to tell us how to live. And they've got all the solutions and they're, you know, what we should do, what we... Are not. They want the benefits and the attributes of God so that they can, you know, the benefits, the big benefits, do what we say here, and you get to go up to the big party in the sky, the after party, we called it on Mr. Deity. Um, um, so you have these various uh, attributes that they've assigned to God to make God in some way meaningful and feasible to us, but we really don't know any of them. We, we have no idea if God is all-knowing. We have no idea even if God exists, but even if he exists, how do we know if he's all-knowing? How do we know if his, he's omnipotent or omnibenevolent? Um, the attributes are reverse-engineered for human need. Um, um, hold on, I'm just going to move through some of these. How do we know what God is like? How do we know what he wants? That's why I call it my atheism is practical atheism, because the problem is is for all intents and purposes, it doesn't matter to me because you can't tell me that you know anything about this being or what this being wants from us. You can think you know, but you don't. Um, 
There is no reliable methodology for knowing anything about who God is or what God wants. Um, and that pr presumes that such a being exists. Ask yourself this, what do we know about God today that people didn't know 3,500 years ago? What do we know? What are we absolutely certain about? Is there anything that any everyone agrees on about God? Even within, the re even within religions, what is it? How to spell it, very good. <laughs> and that he loves natural disasters. Um, what do we know about the natural world today that people didn't know 3,500 years ago? It's, it's just enormous. It's absolutely enormous. Um, so I want to play this real quick. This is a list of the world religions that I found on Wikipedia. Just, I want you to note, this takes a minute to go through all these. But I just want you to notice the speed there. Because what a lot of people will say is, well, but we have this book. We have this wonderful book in which God has revealed himself to man, and he's told us who he is, and he's told us what he wants. And so... Now, this is irrelevant, and now we do know something about God. I'm going to just fast forward through this for the sake of time. It goes on a minute. I just wasted a minute of your life. This is the number of religions who believe in that book. They all disagree on shit, enough so that they had to create their own religions to dissociate themselves from the other assholes who think they know what went on in that book. If you'll notice, the speed is much faster because there are more Christian denominations than there are world religions. Meaning that when you have a book that tells you what God wants, you're more likely not to know anything. Okay, I'll forward on that. The only thing that we do know about God is we gain more knowledge, and I didn't come up with this chart, so I can't take credit for it, but it's fantastic, is as we gain more knowledge, God gains, his power diminishes. It's almost like a drain kind of thing, you know, uh, a balanced thing. So at the beginning, he creates the universe, and then he floods the planet, and then he causes plagues. Still pretty powerful. He heals the sick and the blind. That's pretty cool. Uh, you know, that's a lot of power. He cures uh, syphilis. Uh, but by the time we get to us and pass the scientific revolution, um, he appears on toast. <laughs> that's about all he can do. By the way, I know I'm talking really fast, and you are doing an amazing job. I just want to tell you that. Um, the real problem, though, is that God, the idea of God, brings in this idea of the supernatural. The problem with the supernatural is that with God, all things are possible. If all things are possible, knowledge is meaningless. Because my ways are not your ways, neither are my thoughts or your thoughts, says God. In other words, however rational you think it is, you, they've got this great Kalam cosmological argument, which sounds very rational, but you've just created a fabric on which that rational argument is sitting, which means nothing because in the supernatural world, reason and logic mean absolutely nothing. Anything could be true when anything is possible. So talk about counterintuitive, okay? And there are two big problems with that, one for the religious, one for the rest of it, one for the rest of it. The one for the religious is once the supernatural is, in, is, is allowed, how does anyone know anything? And I'll give you the perfect example. Once you have all kinds of spooky, mystical, magical things going on out, out there, it really could be that Jesus of Nazareth was raised from the dead and walked out of his tomb and... and went up into the sky. The problem is that it's just as likely that Satan raised Jesus from the dead as it is that God did it. How do you know? How do you know? You've just created a world where you can't know anything about anything, and all kinds of mystical forces are out there maybe trying to trick us into some kind of hell. We used to think that the people, when I was religious, that the people in other religions were tricked by the devil. Okay? So maybe we're all tricked by the devil. How do you know anything? It's just a ridiculous idea. But here's the big problem for the rest of us. No matter how batshit crazy something seems, it could be God's will, particularly if it's in that book. 
okay? Because that book tells us everything. That includes genocide, sexism, racism, homophobia. And that's why these people have been so hard to fight because they believe that things that are completely horrible could be God's will. There was a preacher a couple weeks ago who said, you know, the, the, for all we know, I mean, you know, it's in, the, it's in Leviticus, so the, uh, you know, the Westboro Baptist people could be right. And he was being honest. He, he was a, he's a legitimate preacher. He was just saying what is obviously true. How do you know? How do you know that God doesn't want you to go to funerals and pick it with God hates fag signs? That's not unreasonable in a supernatural world where reason is, is irrelevant, where whatever seems right doesn't matter because you've got a book that says this is what God says was right. And presuming to know things when you don't is dangerous. Um, religion pretends to have solutions to our most troubling questions, morality, meaning and purpose, the afterlife, the origin of the universe, reward and punishment, how to make a good society, how to raise children to be good people. But what if they're just dead wrong because they've, they've which I think they are, because they've been believing that this book that they have uh, was given to them by a supernatural being who maybe even wants to trick us. You know, uh, Abraham, go look at Abraham. Abraham talked to God. God said, go kill your kid. But it, it was a trick. It was just a trick. So even built into the book itself is the idea that God could be fucking with you. <laughs> and yet they're following it lock, stock, and barrel. It's ridiculous. My favorite example of this is William Lane Craig when he debated Sam Harris. He ended his debate with this whole thing about how, you know, in the end, if you don't have a God, it's just your word about what's right versus someone else's. You don't have a God to point to. And anyone can say, like the schoolyard, schoolyard bully, says who? You think murder is wrong? Says who? The problem with that idea, as we know now, it, that's one of those things, another great thing, that's, that sounds like a good argument. That's a pretty good argument. The problem is, says who is Gandhi? Says who is Rosa Parks? Says who is Martin Luther King? Says who is one of the great moral ideas in human history? It says, don't accept some authority who tells you what is right and wrong. You have to make a moral argument for why it's right and wrong, and you have to put your moral conscience behind it. There is no moral conscience that says, you know, you can wipe out all of the people on the earth uh, because you're being wicked. There was just a, I'm, we're going to be doing a way of the mister on this. You know, after Bill Maher said his thing about Noah, my old mentor uh, from my religious days, uh, radio talk show host Dennis Prager, wrote an article called Noah, uh, the most, one of the most moral stories ever, in, in which he defends genocide. And these people always forget somehow that when you're talking about genocide like that, you're talking about killing babies. This is what they're defending, killing babies. And in the article himself, he says he, he says he thinks he has these great points about the lessons, moral lessons we've learned, one of which is the necessity of revelation to know what, how to live and what to do. And he says that God did not give Adam and Eve the Ten Commandments. He didn't give them the necessary moral instruction to create a good world, which I'm sitting there reading it thinking, does he just realize that he said God failed to do that which is morally necessary? This is how convoluted the brain gets. What do you call a, an all-knowing being who fails to do that which is morally necessary? Immoral? I call him God. Um, but there you have... You know, this is what religion can do to people. You have an, a, an Orthodox Jew defending the killing of babies just 70 years after the Nazis toured Europe killing babies. That's the kind of thinking that religion can cause in, in otherwise rational, good, decent people. It's frightening. Um, and in the end, uh, religion, this is why religion has been the mortal enemy of science, knowledge, and education. Because when ignorance is your best argument for something you want to be true, and they really do want it to be true, they don't want to die, they want to go to this nice heaven and live forever, it's not pure narcissism, um, then knowledge is your greatest enemy. So that's my speech. I want to say you can find Mr. Didi on YouTube and on iTunes, um, on the web, 
And we are donation supported, so if you can help out, that would be great. I want to leave you with something that's so fantastic that we did earlier this year. It's a, it's a Mr. Deity with someone we all know and love. Well, I miss the goatee, but I really like what you've done here, David. You do? I do. I, the PR stuff is great. That's such a relief. I was, I was so nervous. Oh, yeah. No, I've been advocating this stuff forever. Really? Yeah, and not just for the public relations angle, although obviously that'll be tremendously helpful. I just feel it's the right thing to do. Great. So we make a big PR push then, right? Right. No more communism. Done with it? We stop producing pornography, organizing swingers parties. We drop our allegiance to shag carpeting. Brilliant. And of course, we stop eating babies. Yeah, well, that's a no-brainer. And don't forget, you've got to get on that billboard campaign immediately. You know we're going to take a lot of heat for that, right? Yeah, I can handle the heat. Yeah, well, I meant with the media. Oh, the media, please. Uh, I can take care of the media. You can? What are you going to do? I'm going to give you, um, let's call it a gift. A gift? Yeah. Uh, think of it as your superpower, if you will. A superpower? Yeah. That sounds really cool. Yeah. I'm going to make it so that religious people sound like babbling idiots in your presence. You mean more so? Right. And they're going to do it in the most public and humiliating manner. You can do that? The world is my domain, David. Of course I can do that. Hey, sorry. I didn't know you had company. Um, I'm stuck. Here. Thank you. Hey, I'm uh, Elle, by the way. Hi, I'm David. David? Oh! Yeah, I love your work. You do? Yeah, of course, absolutely. Did you see the way he took down that big guy, that Goliath guy, right? I mean, Elle has to be running. What? No, I, I can stay. I'm good. What, what are you guys talking about? Oh, we're, we're talking about atheism and how... Oh, boy, I should have known. What, what are you, a baby eater? We're not doing that anymore. Oh, I see. Okay, so what's the big push now? Oh, wait, let me guess. Evolution? Yeah, we do oh, advocate. Oh, David, you know, this is so sad. Didn't he look like a smart guy? You look like a smart yeah. guy. I mean, aside from the, the, the murder and the adultery and maybe a little homosexuality. What? But, you know, he hasn't thought this stuff through, right? Obviously, because think about it for a minute. Just give it two seconds. If, if humans evolve from monkeys, why are there monkeys still? Nobody thinks this stuff through, all right? And why don't humans still speak monkey or at least orangutan, right? I mean, I was a Jew for 33 years, what, 2,000 years ago? But I still remember how to, you know, how to Baruch Adonai Eloheinu Melech Olam or whatever it is. I don't do the guttural thing very well anymore. But really, I mean, you can explain how tides work and, and the sunrise and stuff like that. There's never a miscommunication, David. I mean, you can't explain that. Actually, Neil deGrasse Tyson did an excellent job of explaining just that on the Colbert Report. Please, are you kidding me? That Colbert guy mopped the floor with that astrologist hack. And, and come on, David, you know, just open your heart. Open your heart. Think with your heart for a second, because that's really the, the organ you want to be thinking with. How many people have been helped by, by the philosophy of Christianity? Philosophy. What? So what, you're one of these guys who all of a sudden you're going to start calling Christianity a religion? Please. You know what, you should just go. No, I'm not going until I have scared the bejeebus out of him. What? Aha! Yeah, look at that, he's shaking in his boots. I bet this keeps you up at night, doesn't it? A banana. A banana, please. Don't, don't play dumb with me, okay? I invented dumb, all right? This is the perfect sign of creation. This is intelligent design in a pretty little fruit. It's, a, it's got a tab, right? Just like a Coke can. You think that just happens? Look at the five ridges. It fits perfectly into the hand. And it's got a color-coded alert system, just like Homeland Security. Watch this. I'm going to turn it towards the mouth. And what does it want? It wants to be eaten. Unlike the babies. What? You know what? That's enough. I'm going to have to ask you to go. Me? Why? He's the baby eater. We don't do that anymore. Y you know what? I'll just go and I'll come by later. Fine. Whatever. You know what? Say hi to Bathsheba for me. Wow. Yeah. That was amazing. Yeah, and I have to deal with him all the time. Well, look, thank you so much. This is great. It's going to give me so much more confidence moving forward. What? The gift. The superpower. It's great. What are you talking about? Seeing it work like that on him, I feel really strong now, like there's nothing I can't handle. Oh, no, 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 no. That wasn't the superpower. It wasn't? No, he's like that all the time. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hey everyone, thanks again for watching and a special thanks to David Silverman uh, who came in and just really did a great job. I mean, didn't he? He hit a homie there. Thank you, David.